I often think it's such a pity that dessert is served at the end of a meal when you're full up on everything else. But I'm obviously going to have to learn to pace myself because I do have a dessert hall of fame. Different delicious recipes to bring you sweet joy at the end of a meal or as dinner in its entirety. There's got to be peach melba, perfumed poached peaches over a scoop of cool, cool vanilla ice cream anointed with rich red raspberry sauce. Black and white creams, black in cassis rippled through whipped cream with crushed meringue. And of course, cupcakes with royal icing decorated with an edible bouquet. Not forgetting either fruit fizz, the coolest, easiest sparkling wine and sorbet dessert. No work and total pleasure. When you eat peach melba, you realise why it is that some things become a classic. It is more delectable than I can say. You need to start off with poached peaches, which means poaching some. The liquid is fairly straightforward. You need, I would say, about cup and a half, about 375 millilitres of water and cup and three quarters, that's about 350 grams of sugar. In it goes into a pan that really is wide enough to take the peaches later. There's the sugar. I want some vanilla, proper vanilla, so I shall snip in half a pod. Of course you could use liquid vanilla, but this is really lovely. I'm going to bung this in the sugar for safekeeping. And I want a spritz of lemon. I would say the juice of about a quarter of a lemon. And this needs to come to a boil and then bubble away for about five minutes before I immerse the peaches in it. And while that is happening, I shall prepare the peaches. And by prepare the peaches, I mean nothing more arduous than halving them. You could take some of the stones out, although sometimes, you know, I find it much easier to do this after the peaches have been poached. Generally speaking, I don't hold with cooking fruit. I think it loses all the point. But with peaches, it can make a real difference. Not least because so often peaches are disappointingly hard. And once you've poached them, they get all their due peachiness and lusciousness back. Well, the syrup is very exuberant now, so I am going to plop in the peaches very gently. This is, after all, boiling sugar here. I'm putting them cut side down now. And then after about two minutes, I will flip them over and give them another two to three minutes on the other side. The simmer should be insistent, but still low. What you don't want is actually to boil the fruit so it gets a bit woolly. A happy sight. The peaches can be gently, cautiously turned over now. And the good thing about doing them this way round is that now, when I want to test if they're cooked, I can just pierce this cut side with a fork or a sharp knife and I can test them without marring their beauty. Well, the peaches are cooking beautifully, so I am going to go and get the next component, the ice cream. I think it makes sense to take the ice cream out now, so it's got time to soften a little. Now, time for the peaches to be disrobed. Any old plate will do. Just bring them over, peel off the skin. Now I do this after the peaches have been poached, not just because it's easier. I know I've got asbestos hands. You could wait a minute or so, I'm too impatient. Because can you see the color seeps through the skin as they cook, leaving them with the most glorious sunset rosy cheeks. And don't think that we're wasting all this beautiful pink syrup in the pan. What I do is I let this get cold and then I freeze it and then next time I want to make this I start off with the syrup already made. I don't have to start with the water and sugar again. There is a method somewhere. So slip all the remaining skins off. Very easy now they're cooked. 
Look at these, naked and blushing. I'm just going to sit the peaches down to cool while I get on with the final flourish, the raspberry sauce that you need in Peach Melba. It's about a cup and a half of raspberries, just under 200 grams. Two to three tablespoons of icing sugar, powdered sugar, depending on how sweet the raspberries are. And here's my lemon half from before. So I need a quarter of a lemon's worth of juice here, just to balance the sugar. And a quick blitz and the sauce is done. Now I often am very lazy and take shortcuts. But here, I think it really is worth getting a sieve out and making the raspberry sauce super smooth. I say extra effort, it's not that much effort. Just push with a spoon through a sieve. People always use raspberry to denote a colour that is pink. And yet, you can see that raspberries like this aren't pink at all, but a kind of lucent orange-red. And now I'm ready to unite all three elements. I allow a peach per person. This is mine. I'll get the children theirs later. So put two peach halves on a plate and then Add the ice cream. Two peach half size dollops of vanilla. And then, with joy in your heart, give a raspberry dash of red, red sauce. Melba was created in honour of Dame Nellie Melba and you can see it does have a certain operatic appeal. Can't sing but I certainly can eat. One way of rustling up a very easy pudding but one that feels special is by having a good library of liqueurs. You can see I'm doing pretty well. I love this strawberry liqueur and just chop up some strawberries, dribble it over, fabulous. Feels a bit different. Now, I picked this up, this chestnut liqueur, when I was on holiday in Corsica. And you can see I have used it quite a bit. It can make a bought chocolate cake taste really special. And from an Italian holiday, I've got a lovely lemon liqueur, really heaven on anything but right now for my black and white cream I want some black currant liqueur in the form of my creme de cassis well this creme de cassis is one part of the black and white cream these these beautiful blackberries are the other part the white meringue oh cream the cream I've got 250 grams of blackberries here look at them as shiny as jet I want to tumble most of them out into a bowl, but leave some for adorning the floppy fruity cream later. And about two teaspoons of blackcurrant liqueur, or to be frank, you could use blackcurrant cordial, and squish with a fork. You need to squish them firmly enough so that they squash down but not so firmly that you end up splattering yourself with their juices. And I'm going to leave the inky berries in their juice for a moment while I whip up the cream. About 250 millilitres of whipping cream. A whisk. For this amount, you really don't need to get machinery out. Just Keep going and going and going until the cream is thick, full of air, but still with a bit of softness to it. I'm burning up calories here that I will replenish very, very shortly. There we are. 
Perfect. Keeping the cream soft, I think, is the key to making this feel special, ethereal. One of the meringues, they're from a packet bought from a shop, needs to be crumbled in now. I like to keep some bits fairly big for texture, but a lot that is actually just fine dust, like snow. And I shall add black to white in a way that doesn't at all make grey, but rather a rather fabulous 70s purple. Fold it together. Wow. What's the colour smells of blackberry? And dollop delicately onto a plate. Start with plump, juicy berries, still shining black. And give a final snowy dusting of meringue. Another snowfall. Now, this serves two, and two pretty greedy people at that. That suits me just fine. Mm. By decorating them, what I mean is, I pluck a sugar flower and then I just top the flower on the cake. I'm going to get these pansies and they look rather fabulous, very bright. And what else could I get? Oh, see, a daisy is always enchanting, isn't it? Look at that. And oh, these, look at that, that beautiful, the red and the green. And the thing about just putting a flower on the cake like that, very, very pleasing. You put them on the cake, and even if you're as clumsy as I am, you look incredibly professional and competent. So it just goes to prove you can fool some of the people some of the time. And I've made myself very happy with my shopping, and now I'm going to make myself incredibly happy with my cooking. If decorating cupcakes is utter joy, then making them is a complete breeze. I have to say, at home I am a one-woman cupcake factory. I make a batch very, very often. Start off with four ounces, 125 grams of butter, unsalted and soft. Another 125 grams, that's about half a cup and a tablespoon of sugar. Hundred and twenty-five grams, which is three quarters of a cup of flour. Although you know it's really easiest to think imperially here, which is to say four ounces of butter, four ounces of sugar, four ounces of flour, and then you halve that to get to the number of eggs you need. So two. And if you're doing eight ounces of everything, four eggs. Second egg in now. To add a little heft, a teaspoon of baking powder. I often use more, but I want these to be easy to decorate, which means I don't want them to rise too much, so just one teaspoon today. And half a teaspoon of bicarb baking soda. And about two teaspoons of good vanilla, so we get complete vanilla gorgeousness here. And now, lid on to blitz. And 
now about two tablespoons of milk with the motor running just to help the batter get to a nice dropping consistency. All done. All we have to do is fill up those 12 empty cupcake cases. The only thing I would like to say now is don't panic. You will think you don't have enough batter to fill, but you really do. Every time I make these, I think, oh, I haven't got enough batter and I'm not going to fill every case. And every time I bake them, I am relieved to say I do. Just a dollop in each, the batter does rise. And they need to be baked for about 15 to 20 minutes in a preheated oven, 200 degrees centigrade or 400 Fahrenheit. So you don't even need to be very patient. There is not an occasion in life where I can't think of making a cupcake to celebrate. There are many ways to frost a cupcake, but these beauties deserve the best, which in my book is Royal Icing, aptly named. You need to start off with a dense cloud of icing sugar. I've got 350 grams here. Three cups, which you do need to sieve. And this is mixed together with two egg whites. If you don't want to use raw egg, then you can just replace the egg white with dried powdered egg whites. In with a second egg white. It's very easy work, but you need a modicum of patience, which I don't always have, because it takes about five minutes for the whites and sugar to be mixed together. And then you need another two minutes after putting a squirt of lemon juice in. But still, you wait till you see the final product. I have to say, I am very glad I'm not doing this by hand. I have done it by hand. This is the easier option. I can just stand proudly and look. I'm going to make this, if it's possible to believe, both whiter and brighter with a squirt of lemon juice. improves the taste as well. Perfect. And I am going to do something very unfamiliar and have a bit of a tidy up so I can get my little babies closer to me in time for their icing in a minute. And I think they look glorious and golden now, but you wait until you see them covered in a white of unparalleled intensity. Right, I'm not waiting any longer. I'm going to ice my cupcakes. I can't tell you how many cake sales I've done with this icing. And the thing about it is, the distinguishing point about royal icing, now that it's wet, is its glossiness. I mean, it looks to me like white patent leather. But as it dries, it goes so deeply, densely matte. Unbelievable. And the thing about that as well is it, I suppose I find they look almost ludicrously perfect, as if they're bought at a toy shop or something. I like a thick, thick white covering, like fresh snowfall. And what I like particularly is, as the icing drips down, it sets as if it's in suspended animation.
And the wonderful thing about this icing is that it is both chic, if I may say so, and practical because it looks beautiful, but it also will keep the cake fresh that little bit longer because it seals it in. Now I know, strictly speaking, it's not possible to improve on perfection, but just wait. Onto that snowy white topping, a daisy. Ah, and now in my kitchen garden here, a pink rose, sugar pansy, and lovely red sugar rosebud with me. Uh, I couldn't be any happier. My last rosebud here. Oh. I am now going to attempt to transfer them to a fittingly pretty serving plate. And the thing is, I'm not even good with my hands, and I feel I've created something beautiful here. It's enough to make anyone happy. Oh, I want to give it a Thank you. Oh, I want to have this one. Good work. I can't mm. come big <laughs> a little bit of lemon that's in the icing, which is perfect. Mm. One more for the road hedge. Mm. Why not? You know, you don't have to cook up a storm every time you want something luscious for pudding. I find the deep freeze is a very useful repository for time-saving deliciousness. For example, we know about ice cream, but you know that meringue doesn't need to be thawed, it's edible straight from the deep freeze. So I have got here a really perfect no-thaw ice cream sandwich. Fruit, useful. I've got some blueberries here, which means I can do a quick bake of something. They don't need to be thawed, that's it, in the oven. Oh, and I've got these, you can see, white cake sandwiches for trifle. Lovely little squares of sponge, pour some liqueur over, bit of whipped cream, you're away. Right now, I am after some sorbets, really fruity and sherbety. What I'm making now is proof that so often the best things in life are the simplest. I'm making, I suppose, what I would call a grown-up ice cream soda, my fruit fizz. You need some sorbets. I have here lemon raspberry, mango, and blackcurrant. I mean, you can suit yourself with flavors. That is mixed with some fizzy wine. Glass in front of you. It's not really possible to be precise about quantities. The idea is to fill each glass about three quarters up with sorbet. It's a quick clean in between each go so I don't Make the flavours intermingle. Now, gorgeous raspberry. Look at that colour, a beautiful crimson orb. Now, the mango. Look at that sunshine. And finally, the darker red of the black currant. Beautiful. My kitchen paint box. Then all you need to do is watch the fruit fizz up, hence the name. Look at that. Coming back in for seconds. Round two.
and just so you can make it seem like you've really made a lot of effort over this I suggest you grate over a little lemon zest and pluck some mint leaves and adorn the top with one lovely summery leaf. How beautiful is that? I'm going to have a little bit of a taste test now just to work out which one is my favourite. Mmm, it is a lemony heaven. is as fruity and fabulous. Mm. It's like the perfect beach holiday. Mm. You know what? I'll when they're all empty. <laughs> <laughs>